What's going on lunatics? Welcome back to the bait laboratory. Haven't done a tackle making video in a while, but we're out here in the garage and we're gonna be making some Ned worms. And we're gonna be making peanut butter and jelly, also known as PB and J Ned worms. I got a custom order that came in through my email and I'm gonna fill it and put it on a video for you guys. I've never made PB and J for sure on video. I know that um, I might've done something for myself while I was playing around, but not exactly sure. <clears throat> Um, if you're tuning into my channel for the first time, please give me a subscribe um, and let me know if you do subscribe. Say, hey, I sub. Thanks for putting out the video. Just something, whatever. It's all good. That beeping right there is the first run of getting my plastisol nice and warmed up to get these things going. But um, PB&J, pretty staple color. I think every company on the planet makes a PB&J something, whether it's a worm, a Ned worm, whatever plastics, there's a PB&J probably in every soft plastic lineup so we're gonna make it today and i'm gonna show you how i come up with it and how i do it i'm gonna be using my midwest finesse do it mold uh the midwest finesse ned worm do it mold is is one of my favorite molds it's super easy to shoot super easy to do laminates with which the pb and j is a laminate color purple on one side brown on the other so let's get into it let's make some baits and uh like i said if you're new to the channel please subscribe drop a like down below and drop me a comment and let's get a conversation going if there's any color schemes that you guys would like to see me do make sure to comment those down below as well so let's get into it let's make some baits okay so this is the plastisol that we're using today this is the soft formula of the crystal clear soft baits by do it molds plastisol this is our midwest finesse do it mold right here as well um, I'm going to use a purple and brown pigment colorant today and I'm probably going to add some black flake in it. So once I get this plastisol um, ready to go, I'll start filming again and get these colors um, started. All right, so our plastisol got heated up to 350 degrees, which is, which is what we want. Uh, one thing I do suggest is to invest in a um, infrared thermometer. It makes it a lot easier to get your temperatures. So the first color we're gonna make is the purple. And this purple that I'm using takes a lot. So we're gonna put a bunch in there. It's pretty see-through, so I wanted to put a lot in there to make sure that we were getting a nice purple color. Um, so we're just gonna mix this on in. And I think that turned out pretty good. It looks like grape jelly, which is kind of what we're going for. Nice little grape color, there we go. Sorry about the crow in the background, I can't really do anything about mother nature, but we're gonna make some good looking baits, I think. So, so far that looks pretty good. I might add one drop of black just to thicken that color up, because it's the right consistency, but I think it's gonna be too see-through, but we might have to test that out. And this brown that I'm using is also a little bit, um, thin as well so it's going to take a little bit more than normal so we're just putting that brown in there and this is one cup of plastisol as well and we are going to add some black flake in there and uh, that will darken everything just to, just slightly but I already think I can tell I don't know we'll have to just kind of see a little bit but yeah it's still looking pretty thin on there on that brown side but what I might do is run like one small bait just to kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like because I don't want to waste an entire run on an entire thing of uh, plastisol so I don't waste as any but um, let's add some black flake in there because I want to get a little bit more of an idea of what this is going to look like and this is a quarter teaspoon of black flake that's going in on each side there we go mix that on in the black flake does tend to darken everything up it's not going to make your plastisol or your colorant thicker per se but it will darken it it'll give it a little bit darker of a hue just because of all that black flake in there mixing in with your plastic and stuff but um overall i like to add black flake i just kind of feel like it kind of makes it a little bit more natural in my opinion um, sometimes the different like blues and everything like that that's just not really what I'm going for. But I'm gonna add some more brown in here. Just don't wanna mess this up because I don't wanna waste this much plastic. So I got two cups, one cup in each 
color. So what I might do is I'm running a risk here, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add like a drop. Oh, I didn't shake it enough. Um, I'm a drop of black because I think if I add just a little bit of black in there It'll thicken this color up And with one cup those two drops I don't think are gonna make too much of a difference But it might thicken it up and not make it so see-through which is what I'm kind of going for here But I think I need to make one run Before I get too crazy with everything Add just another drop of black in there or two drops. Yeah, I can kind of tell there's a, just a little bit darker hue to it. So I think what I'm going to do is a, this is something that you can do to kind of test your colors a little bit. Is just take a little bit on whatever you're using to stir it and just put it onto the table just like that and that's going to give you an idea of what that color is going to look like when it's not in your cup so we're going to do that for both sides and then we're going to put both of these cups back into the microwave so they stay warm and then uh, i'm going to check out those colors here in a second to see what they look like and then we'll decide if we're going to run these baits or not right now Okay, so that's what our purple is going to look like. I'm liking it right now, and here's what the brown's looking like. I'm liking that one as well. I think together that does make a pretty good PBJ. So we're going to go with that, and we're going to make up these Ned Worms right now. And um, I'm hoping that it turns out good. I think it will. So um, we're never going to know for sure until we run these baits to know for sure. So we're going to get everything set up, and uh, the next clip's going to be starting to make these baits with my... Do it multi dual injector, so let's get after it. Okay, so our plastisol should be ready to go. And I just put my finger in it. Thankfully, I'm wearing gloves, or else that would have been a disaster. But I just wiped some of it off, but I can still feel the heat through the glove. But thankfully, I was wearing gloves, or else that would have been real bad. Probably would have had to go to the hospital for that one. But there's our two colors right there that's our purple and our brown. PB and J with a little bit of black flake in there. I'm gonna move these around just like so. And uh, try to get everything positioned so you guys can see on camera. And I'm gonna let this cool down just slightly because if I go too fast, my, my laminate starts to mix because I think those, those plastisols are just a little bit too thin. So they kind of intermingle a little bit. So we're gonna give it a second to cool down and I'll give you an idea what our temps are, temperatures are. That can't be right. It must be cooler up on top, but it's saying 280, 278, which that's not right. But inside, it's definitely warmer, but sometimes that top layer starts to kind of get a little bit cooler, so you can kind of get a um, inaccurate reading. But I know that down inside there, it's gonna be warmer. And I could stir it up to get a better, better calculation or a better temperature or more accurate reading. But um, once we stick this dual injector in there, We'll get the, the right temperature stuff, and we're gonna go for it right now. So we're gonna draw up everything. And one thing I really like to do when I'm doing laminates is check to make sure I have good flow coming out of both sides. So we're gonna do that right now. Yep, I do. So we're gonna come over to our mold, and we're gonna go even pressure down, which is very, very key on laminates, because you wanna make sure that all your colors come out evenly. So we're gonna do even pressure down. And once it stops, you're gonna hold that pressure. You don't wanna overdo it with the pressure when you're holding it. Just kind of give it consistent pressure down to make sure that everything kind of seats together. You get complete pores. And then we're gonna to top off this sprue, just like so. And I think that that laminate's probably gonna turn out because I can see the two different colors when I am pouring the top off that sprue. Gonna put the extra back inside our cups without pushing our spouts off. So that's good. So we'll check these out here in a second. All right, so we're gonna check on these Ned Worms and see how they turned out. See if our first run of PB and J turned out well. I hope so. Um, so let's check them out. Ooh, and they 
they did turn out pretty good. So here's our brown side right there. Flip it around. There's our purple side. I actually really like these. I think these turned out really, really cool. It's not a super, yeah, there's this laminate right there. You can see it. I think those turned out pretty cool. So let's get another run going. All right, so we're ready for round number two. Got a purple and our brown out. Like I said last time, I'm gonna give this a second. And uh, one thing that I found with the uh, dual molds dual injector is to use the one cup size Pyrex when you're doing laminates. Um, it makes it easier when everything goes in smoother. When you get to that um, two cup size, the cups spread out too far at the top and it makes it a little bit more difficult for you to get your dual injector in there. So if you're having trouble doing your laminates with that two cup size um, Pyrex, try downsizing to the one cup version and see if that helps. It definitely made a difference for me. So we're gonna go and draw up our Plastisol up into our injectors, just like so. Make sure we have good pores on both sides, which we do. Come over to our mold. Make sure everything's in there nice and seated. And then we're gonna do even pressure down like last time. I'm gonna hold that pressure once the injectors stop, which we're right there right now. Hold that pressure for a second. And then we're gonna top off the sprues. And it looks like I got a good laminate again. I can usually tell whether I got a good laminate or not when I top off the sprue because if the sprue is not a clear distinct laminate a lot of times that's when you know that you had issues so we're gonna put this plastisol back into the microwave so it stays nice and warm and then we'll check out our Ned worms here in a second all right so we're gonna check our second run of PB&J Ned worms open up the mold check them out so far so good purple side brown side I'm really liking these these turned out really really cool not as drastic as I've seen in some some brands but I think if I were out in the Sun it would do it a lot more justice because um, when I hit the light just right it looks really really cool so I'm really happy with these I think the, the customers definitely gonna like them as well okay so we are on run number three of our Ned worms the customer wants 32 of these so right now we're at 16 so I got a few a couple more of these to do I don't want to run out of plastisol so I'm being cautious I didn't want to draw up a bunch of air or anything like that so we got a good flow come over to our mold get everything nice and seated even pressure down again of course okay we just stopped I'm gonna hold that pressure Lift everything up, top off the sprue. Okay. Extra back in the cups. And what I'm gonna do this time is make sure that I'm not wasting a bunch of plastic. So I'm gonna take my sprues and get that purple out so it doesn't mess up my color. Just put the brown in there. And I'm gonna melt all this down so that way I make sure that I have enough plastic to do one more run because I have 16 right now. So I have 24 right here and I need to do one more run and those sprues ought to do it. All right, so let's check out run number three of our Ned Worms. We're gonna open up the mold. You can hear the microwave in the background. That's me getting the, the final run ready to go with those sprues that I added in. But once again, good looking laminate. Real distinct line on it, which is what you're looking for with those laminates. So pretty happy with how these guys are turning out. Definitely looks like peanut butter and jelly to me. Okay, so our Plastisol is ready to go. As you can see, I melted all those sprues down. One thing to mention when we're doing, um, when you're melting those sprues down, is you definitely wanna make sure that when you're doing it, you give the Plastisol a chance to cool down after you melt everything down because a lot of times these end up getting pretty hot when you have to melt everything back down all the way so that's one thing you want to consider when you're doing the the laminates for sure because these are going to get pretty hot and you have a tendency to have your plastisols mixed together 
when they get real hot. So you wanna let it cool down before you um, go to inject your baits. So give me a couple seconds here and then we will pour these baits. Okay, so I think I've let everything cool down enough. So let's get our final run of PB&J Ned Worms going. Hopefully it's not too hot. So we're gonna draw up our Plastisol. Make sure we have a good flow, we do. Go over to our mold, and sorry about the airplane, another thing that I cannot control out here in the bait laboratory, and we're doing even pressure down as always. We just hit, so we're gonna hold that pressure. And then we're gonna top off the sprue. And these look like they turned out good as well. We'll find out here in a second. I got plenty of plastic left over, so we might have to put some of these up on the website. Okay, so it's time to check our final run of these PB&Js for the customer. Um, I think I am gonna put some of these up on web my website or on Instagram or something. So um, make sure to check that out. But yeah, this final run turned out good as well. Got a nice little line right there for our laminate. But yeah, these PB&Js turned out really good. So we got the customer order all filled. So we're gonna make some more and uh, put some up on the website since I got plenty of plastic left over. Okay, so here's what our PB&J Ned Worms look like out in the sun. Hopefully it's coming through good on camera. But we got the purple side right here. Flip it over, brown side right there. You can definitely see that brown with the black flake. And then even on the purple side, you can see that black flake kind of like almost inside it has a different look in it and i really like it because a lot of times that flake when you see it it looks like it's really right on the surface but on the purple side it definitely looks like it's deep inside of that bait and um hopefully you can see that because it's just it's a good looking worm right there and uh, i'm really happy with how they turned out really looks like pb and j to me pretty excited about it hopefully it's coming through but i think the customer is going to be real happy with these well, that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me make those PB&J Ned Worms. I know the customer is going to be happy with them. I'm happy with the way they turned out. And I think the, the leftovers that I have, I think I have about four packs left over that I'll put up on the website, mattlunafishing.com. Um, they're probably going to be like five bucks a pack, so not too bad. Um, eight per pack. So make sure to check that out if you're interested. Um, pretty cool color. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I don't always try to still sell stuff from my videos, but um, I figured since I had some stuff left over, I might as well offer it out to you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to go check it out. But if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, if you have any color suggestions, make sure to, to comment them down below. And if you just liked the video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. And if you think some other people would enjoy watching this video, I'd really appreciate if you'd, if you'd share it out. And if you do share it out on social media or something, tag me in it, and I will share that out on my social media as well. So again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.